Today, the Oregon District is Dayton's oldest historic district and offers the very best of urban living and beautiful historic homes. It is a culturally significant area and one of the most vibrant areas of the city. However, urban renewal threatened the existence of this neighborhood in the 1970s. It wasn't until Oregon District residents saw the destructive impact of clean sweep redevelopment in the nearby East Dayton Urban Renewal Project that modernization efforts for the then Burns Jackson neighborhood stalled. Following World War II, American cities experienced a high influx of population density which strained the already outdated housing, much of which dated from the 1800s. Government officials and city planners were searching for a way to improve housing and renew city centers. Through the Housing Act and Federal Housing Administration, cities used Title I funds to begin idealistic urban renewal projects. Cities such as Pittsburgh, Denver, New York, and Dayton created plans that required demolishing large sections of their cities for the purposes of renewing the city housing and infrastructure. The Dayton Daily News stated that the philosophy of urban renewal is this. Without government action, slums tend to remain slums. Costs preclude private clearance and redevelopment programs. However, when government pays the clearance costs, private redevelopment becomes feasible. In the 1950s, Dayton was a growing city with over 200,000 residents. Returning World War II veterans and the migration of workers from southern states sought employment in one of the city's many manufacturing plants. During World War II, Dayton was designated as the number one critical labor area by the U.S. War Manpower Commission, causing employment opportunities in Dayton to skyrocket 124% from the previous decade. This rise in manufacturing continued into the post-war years. The city of Dayton had a thriving textile industry and automobile production provided many employment opportunities. Despite the numerous employment opportunities, there were severe housing shortages. Areas located around the city core were overpopulated and caused the housing situation to quickly deteriorate. This led the city to deem large sections blighted or slum areas in need of renewal. One particular area the city of Dayton deemed blighted and in need of renewal was the Haymarket neighborhood. The Haymarket was located south of 5th Street on the east side of Dayton. The area was a predominantly German immigrant neighborhood comprised of around 1,184 families, occupying close to 70 acres. Much of the housing in the Haymarket neighborhood dated back to the 1800s. A 1933 housing survey performed by the city of Dayton identified over 80% of the housing within the Haymarket neighborhood as blighted. Many homes surveyed lacked indoor plumbing and sanitary bathroom systems. The City Planning Board with the Urban Renewal Committee published the final East Dayton Urban Renewal Plan on February 5, 1958. This document was the guiding renewal plan for all renovations in East Dayton to include the Haymarket neighborhood. This plan included a financial analysis of expected expenditures of all land acquisitions. The plan also included public improvements, area rehabilitation, and resident relocation. The cost of the program was estimated to be at $13.6 million and the city of Dayton applied for a grant through the federal government. In 1959, Dayton was issued a grant of $8.6 million. With the funds raised, the City Commission began the process of acquiring properties in the clearance of the Haymarket neighborhood. In 1961, all 660 neighborhood buildings had been destroyed and the 1,768 families removed. With 70 acres of the Haymarket cleared, parceled, and sold to private developers, 
Construction began on the 13-story, 206-unit luxury tower slated to be named Dayton Towers. Construction of the ultra-modern Dayton Towers building was completed in 1963, and building owners and managers immediately began marketing the new apartments as modern city living, reaching out to affluent upper and middle class families. With only high rental prices, there were no units intended to absorb any of the previous neighborhood residents. Nevertheless, 1966 city commissioners were told that the FHA may be foreclosing on the 15-acre East Dayton high-rise Dayton Towers. The luxury apartments had been slow to populate and since the commencement been plagued by disappointing vacancy rates, never achieving full occupancy. Later in the year, the Federal Housing Administration foreclosed on the $3 million Dayton Tower mortgage and the deed was surrendered by the owner. After foreclosure in 1966 by the FHA, Dayton realtor Paul Tips acted as building manager. Tips was successful in raising occupancy rates by over 30%, and in 1969, the Federal Housing Administration opened bidding for the Dayton Towers apartment building. On December 3, 1969, Arthur Bierman, a Dayton developer and business tycoon, was the lone bidder on the FHA-owned Dayton Towers. Bierman stated, I hated to see the property get into the wrong hands. Placing a bid $120,000 above the $2.4 million minimum bid. The original construction cost and FHA loan was $3.5 million. In February 1970, the Dayton Daily News reported that the East Dayton Urban Renewal Area had increased the property tax value $1.1 million over the 1958 value. This was a result of over 20 parcels that had been developed by private business. This also included the main hub for the United States Postal Service in Dayton. The only residential redevelopment had been the Dayton Towers Luxury Apartments. In June of 1970, the first draft of the proposed Burns-Jackson redevelopment plan, written by the Chicago architect Bertrand Goldberg, was released to the public in the Dayton Journal-Herald. The publication detailed the three-phase redevelopment plan that included three 600-unit apartment high-rises, 50 arts and craft shops, and recreation areas. Additionally, 1,000 underground parking spots were to be built. The entire cost of restoring the area was estimated at $22 million, $7 million of which would go towards the acquisition and demolition of more than half of the neighborhood. The FHA would finance the project. However, the Burns-Jackson plan would encounter tough public opposition and ultimately lacked sufficient funding. After witnessing the destructive impact of clean sweep redevelopment in the nearby East Dayton Urban Renewal Project, residents and community leaders advocated for historic preservation of the Burns-Jackson neighborhood. In 1972, the neighborhood was renamed the Oregon District and recognized by the Dayton Historic Preservation Society. The culturally significant neighborhood was protected for future generations.